My name is Omar Fateh. I'm the state senator for District 62 in South Minneapolis. Um, I was born in Washington, D.C. and raised in Virginia. Um, and I'm on the campaign trail and along with my colleagues, I've been telling them that I'm growing up in an immigrant household, but within the American culture, which is a melting pot of ideas, uh, thoughts, religions, and so on. Um, I think I was best to bridge the gap between the new immigrants as well as uh, the folks that uh, have been here. I, Omar Fata, to solve this work to support the Constitution of the United States. I'm blessed to represent uh, a very diverse district uh, in South Minneapolis. Um, it's a lot of working class folks. These are folks that have been really hit really hard uh, this past year with the uh, uh, George Floyd murder, the uprising that followed, uh, but as well as COVID-19, uh, which impacted all of us. I regularly go to Lake Street, uh, which uh, are mostly Latino-owned businesses, and I've made that connection with them to help them um, understand what resources are out there uh, in COVID and in general. I've built a relationship with folks in Little Earth um, to understand indigenous issues, but also what they want to prioritize in the upcoming sessions. When we speak to them, uh, we make sure that we understand that they're not a monolith, right? So if you go into Little Earth, you don't assume that everybody has the same idea or thought process. That's, not, that's just not how it is. Um, so I was fortunate enough to form uh, committees within these different communities um, so that they can help educate me, but also I take their ideas back to the legislature with me um, to turn it into action and into bills. So a lot of the bills that we come up with are actually uh, constituent uh, run and ideas uh, that uh, we brought with us in these meetings. So we're here at Kamar Mall, located in South Minneapolis. Um, there are two Somali malls here in South Minneapolis, both in my district. This is one of the areas that was hit hardest. Uh, by COVID-19. Uh, for the first few months uh, during the pandemic, uh, people really struggled. We had businesses here shut down, uh, but they rebounded. They came back. Uh, we had uh, the customers continue to come and support uh, these locally owned, immigrant owned businesses, and they continue to thrive. So they really bounced back from COVID-19. We have a lot of business owners um, that are immigrant owned businesses, specifically within the daycares, uh, child daycares and adult daycares, um, home care owners, group home owners, and folks that have struggled uh, with the administrative side of the Department of Human Services. Um, one of the things I tried to do is bridge the gap between um, the immigrant community but also the government, the commissioners, the assistant commissioners. Um, I've had meetings with the departments as well as the business owners so that they can fully understand um, the, any policy changes that are coming up, for example. If they've had any issues with their businesses, they can better understand um, how to function and organize. Um, but also bringing the businesses together so that they get to know one another as well, so that when they're interacting with government, um, they're united as one voice rather than uh, individual businesses. And that has proven to be successful. This is George Floyd Square. Uh, it is a memorial, a remembrance for uh, George Floyd and the murder that occurred uh, a little over a year ago now. Folks are coming from all over to come pay their respects, um, look at the memorial, but also um, come to these black businesses that are over here, the coffee shops, the restaurants, the tea bars. We've seen uh, a massive increase in crime uh, following the murder of George Floyd. Uh, and we've seen people attribute that to maybe having less officers or, or um, we need more police. When that's not the case, um, we have to remember that because of COVID, uh, people, a lot of people lost work. Uh, a lot of people went on unemployment. A lot of people uh, were struggling to pay rent. And then couple that with uh, the murder of George Floyd, which was a national murder. People saw uh, an innocent black man getting tortured to death for nine minutes. Um, people took to the streets. They were really upset. I represent the district in which George Floyd was murdered and the uprising that followed. Uh, really hurt uh, a lot of folks, both the protesters but also business owners. I'm hoping to continue the good work um, that our office as well as our colleagues have done here. Um, so making sure that we prioritize public safety, making sure that we're investing in affordable housing and public housing so that we're not pricing out our, our residents and we're preserving uh, our diversity and making sure that we have a single-payer healthcare system that's not tied to employment so that we make sure that healthcare is fundamentally a human right.